morning ladies and gentlemen welcome to my channel we are in the 22nd nakshatra of shravana discussing in these lecture series the possible instincts and totems related to vedic astrology nakshatras and if you are new to my channel i encourage you to get into the memberships area where you can find plenty of goodies yes if you're so interested in exploring this deep science right Sharna nakshatra falls in Capricorn, just to recap. It's a moon rule nakshatra, so there is an element of deep emotion buried there. Moon rule nakshatras are about finding resources. They are most exalted in the Arthapada, which means they must find some kind of a resource in order for this nakshatra to be unlocked in terms of life lesson. We are trying to get to the life lesson here. What is that for Shravana? Inquisitiveness of the goal is required to find the path as opposed to aimless wandering. Not aimless wandering. Shravana people can get that. Because it's a passive type nakshatra, but the drive is to create something. Create what is the question? Shravana asks you. And because it falls in the sign of Capricorn, there is some karma involved, there is some work involved, which Saturn is urging you to do. But to find that true path, Ravana says, inquisitiveness of the goal, what are you out to achieve? Only you know that. Only you must inquire and become curious about it. That's the life lesson. Seems pretty simple, isn't it? So let's get to the bird part. Saras crane is the bird and animal is the monkey. Let's go to the top boxes, then we'll go through the totems and finally we will finish up with the instinct houses and how they might play out. Saras crane. <clears throat> this is a wetland bird. It sits in the wetland environments, just marshes, flooded fields, wetland, grasslands. That is amusing for me to observe because Capricorn is a sign of marshy lands. You see that commonality there with the zodiac. It's the tallest flying bird. Saras cranes are tallest flying birds with instinctual ability for wading and foraging in shallow water for aquatic prey, grains and plants. So it's omnivorous, okay? So are monkeys really. Monogamous family bonds. Again, this will play out if you are in the fifth and eighth house of Shravana. They are known for forming monogamous pairs, instinctively raising their young as a family unit. With both parents sharing incubation and chick rearing duties. Nice one there. Social behavior. They are social birds forming small family groups. This is pretty common. Communication calls are there especially for courtship. That's Sarah's crane. Monkey on the other side. We saw monkeys even play out in the previous one. Which one was that? can leave in the comments if you remember. <clears throat> Arboreal and terrestrial behavior, they are tree dwelling as well as ground dwelling, very adaptable. So what could this mean for Shavana and life lesson? Well, you got to become very adaptable in nature. You are adaptable in nature. You have an omnivorous diet. Your social behavior is very active, Capricorn restricts that to a degree so that you may find your life path. Every nakshatra is sort of a self-contradictory, like a zen-like life path, okay? You might find this if you go through the previous ones and further ones also. Tool use and problem solving skills, instincts for tool use and problem solving is present as an instinct 
communication through vocalization and body language. That's also present in monkeys. But here's the thing you got to understand about monkey symbology. They're highly active in nature. Mind is very strong. Mind is very movable sitting in moon. So the mind is where Shrana struggles with. A restless mind sitting in the nakshatra of moon. They need to find a goal. They need to be really curious of the goal in order to do anything meaningful rather than aimless wandering. Okay, now with the totems of it. What do these symbols really mean in esoteric terms? The Sarah screens, first of all, mean grace and elegance. They are known for graceful and elegant appearance, emphasizing the importance of carrying oneself with poise and beauty. It's a devgana. So you need to strive for higher ideology anyway. That's the purpose of this. Family and fidelity. Sarah's grains, if you're seeing one or if you put pictures of it, are often associated with family values and fidelity, symbolizing the importance of strong family bonds and monogamous partnerships. So it's stressing something on the family front, especially if it's in the fourth and fifth house, which which we shall see shortly. Longevity and endurance. These birds have long lifespans. Saturn typically brings long lifespans, especially if it's sitting in the eighth house. Right there. Right, it suppresses transformation. So it brings longevity. If it sits in the house of death and rebirth. This totem may symbolize to represent the ability to endure life's challenges and celebrate the passage of time. Very important considering Saturn is considered the lord of time. Saturn gives the time to experience the karma and life challenges. Sarah's screen symbolizes that sitting in the zodiac of Capricorn. Connection to water and emotions. Sarah's grains are often found in wetlands and are closely associated with water, symbolizing connection to emotions, intuition, and importance of navigating the ebb and flow of life. Protection and guardianship. In some cultures, Sarah's grains are seen as protectors and symbols of guardianship, especially in the relation to family and loved ones. The need to protect and offer guidance. This could be one of the things. Since it's a Devgana and it's in Saturn's zodiac of Capricorn, this might be strong. They might be good teachers. But they have a challenge inherently in Shrana to listen to good advice. They need to first get inquisitive about the goal, what they are trying to achieve. Yes? Now, coming to monkeys, we have seen this in Purva Ashada, if you remember. Playfulness and fun. Bring the element of fun and lightheartedness. If you are having Shavana, it can get really serious about things. Monkey is suggesting you become playful with finding your goal. Play with things in order to get that inquisitiveness of goal. But try a number of things, for example. Adaptability and creativity. Monkeys are known to be highly adaptable and creative problem solving. This totem emphasizes the adaptability and ability to find creative solutions to life's challenges or even your goal in this case. Social bonds and community. So, engage with people, form social bonds, cooperate with people and work together to achieve that goal. Monkeys are trickster, symbols of wisdom. Okay. Being a Devgana, it is natural that this will go towards wisdom. This totem symbolizes the balance between playfulness and wisdom and the importance of using intelligence wisely. 
agility and adaptability. See there once again. Being in the nakshatra, in the zodiac of Capricorn, and the Devgana is kind of a oxymoron in itself, right? So Saturn Moon combination can make them deep thinkers, but can also incapacitate them in terms of finding the true goal. Essentially, that's what we are saying. Okay, now let's get to the instinct part. The first house. 4th house, 5th house, 8th and 12th house. That's what we are talking about in terms of instinct in your chart. 1st house is also your head, your personality, your physical body, your thinking process, your intuition, logic and reasoning, self-identity and expression. 4th house is your home, your family, your heart, your emotional life. 5th house is the house of navel chakra, the belly, the creative intelligence, the self-identity in self-expression. Courtship behaviors, learning an intellectual bent of mind, children, therefore even instinctual parenting you might say. The 8th house is the house of root chakra, the sexual center of instinct, innate security, how secure are you as a person? or otherwise, handling changes of life. We do it at an instinctual level, folks. It's not a learned behavior. And finally, the twelfth house associated with subconscious mind psychology, dream time, hidden desires, exploration of psychic, hidden and spiritual realms. Okay, so how does this play out in these houses? Let's see. So what dominant ascendants will play out for Shrana Nakshatra in terms of instincts? <clears throat> first of all, the Capricorn ascendant. If there are dominant planets or points in your first house Capricorn ascendant, this you need to examine. Are you inquisitive about the goal of your life? Because ascendant is the dominant one. Okay. That's what you need to explore in the natal chart. Number four, Libra, right? 10, 9, 8, 7. So for Libra ascendants, you have to examine your emotional quotient. If there are more planets or points in Shana here. What is the goal with your local community? Fourth house is also your local community. There's something needs to be done there. Find out that. Become inquisitive about that goal. If it's 5th house, for example, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Virgo Ascendants, then it becomes about your idea of fame and success in life, number one. It becomes about your children, it becomes about your creative intelligence, creative self-identity, the I that seeks the fame. So you got to get inquisitive about that. What is the goal you are trying to achieve? That's what it's trying to tell you there. For the 8th house, which means 10 here, which means 9 here, which means 3 over there, Gemini Ascendants, it's going to be more about finding out your sense of security, your innate sense of security. The goal is going to make you secure if you get inquisitive about it. That's essentially what we are saying. For house number 12, which becomes for Aquarius Ascendant, right? For the Aquarius people, if there is more planets or points in Shrana there, in the 12th house, depending upon planet signification, of course, it becomes more about seeing your subconscious mind. What do you dream about? Dream time might give very important clues. Hidden desires. What is your exploration of psychic and hidden realms give you? Get there. Especially if moon is here. Moon stands for the mind, the subconscious buried mind. Yes, if moon is strong in Aquarius Ascendant in 12th house in Shrana, it could mean you need to really get into yourself, get into some meditative practices. For example, 
If Jupiter is there, you might need to learn something. If Saturn is there, you might need to work through something in order to get to that goal. Okay. In the next one, we shall be getting into the 23rd nakshatra of Dhanishtha, which falls half between Capricorn and next going into Aquarius. That's next. Meanwhile, take care, subscribe, share this video, podcast, wherever you may be listening. And I'll see you in the next. Take care.